Right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm giving the second talk of the RL4 Robotics um, set of presentations. So uh, I'm presenting on a paper that came out of the Robotic Systems Lab at ETH Zurich. And uh, essentially, they uh, aim to make improvements on uh, reinforcement algorithms, uh, reinforcement learning algorithms to uh, navigate uh, quad rotors. Um, so the overview, I'm going to give an uh, introduction to the problem, uh, motivation, background. Then I'm going to introduce um, their particular method, uh, give some empirical results. Uh, I'm also going to show a few clips of a video that they have posted on YouTube of how uh, they train and how they test uh, a real quad rotor. Um, and then a summary and uh, future work. So first, what is a quad rotor? Um, so here's a picture of one. Um, it's basically a helicopter that, uh, given by the name, has four rotors, um, each of which have uh, propellers that have at least two blades. So uh, the high-level goal in this problem is we would like to train the quad rotor uh, to perform uh, different tasks with varying uh, initializations. So there are a couple of uh, different tasks that this paper focuses on, uh, which I'll introduce in a minute. But uh, in general, we can consider this to be uh, just a policy optimization problem. We want to learn uh, the optimal policy to perform a certain task. I'm going to show you a small example of uh, one of the tasks that they want to train uh, the quad rotor to do. So this is a task where the quad rotor uh, starts uh, or knows some initial state that it wants to stabilize at. And uh, an external agent, uh, in this case the human experimenter, uh, is going to throw the quad rotor in some uh, kind of harsh fashion. Uh, maybe it might uh, just have some downward force or it might throw it upside down. And the quad rotor has to learn uh, to stabilize itself, uh, maybe turn itself back up, and get back to its initial state. Uh, so there are a couple of different uh, approaches that this paper compares against that have been um, implemented uh, before for these uh, same tasks. So one of them is a deep deterministic policy gradient, I believe we've seen. Um, it follows the basic actor critic architecture. We have a separate value network and policy network. Um, it's model free. We don't have any um, specific uh, model for the transition or uh, rewards. Um, it also results in a deterministic policy, which is something we'd really like. Um, they also implemented um, a similar actor critic architecture using TRPO. Um, this is also uh, off policy, model free, but it uh, results in a stochastic policy, which for this um, particular uh, task or set of tasks for quad rotors can result in very uh, unreliable policies. So uh, this paper aims to combine both of these ideas, but kind of uh, mitigate um, the fact that we want to get um, a really solid deterministic policy um, for doing this task. And also, we want to have um, fast uh, and reliable convergence, which uh, neither of these algorithms can really guarantee for this task. Uh, so what the authors come up with is a uh, deterministic model um, that follows the same actor-critic architecture, and um, they use an on-policy deterministic policy gradient. So um, if you remember, um, the difference between on-policy and off-policy, uh, we've seen a lot of off-policy algorithms. Uh, we can use uh, any, um, essentially we can choose actions uh, based on any given policy, not necessarily our current one. Uh, so we've seen kind of epsilon greedy, um, where we can choose to take random actions or we can choose to take um, the best action from the entire action space, but not necessarily based on the current policy. Whereas for on-policy algorithms, uh, we want to choose the next action based on the current policy. And um, also, oops, we want to use um, a good exploration strategy. Because uh, the problem with on policy is that if we, we have to train our policy network um, just based on the actions of the current policy. But if we're always following the current policy, we might never get uh, to a better one. 
And so we have to have um, a good, robust exploration strategy. OK, uh, so the basic setup, uh, we're in a continuous state action space. Um, we would like to model the dynamics of our system. Uh, we want to model the position, rotation of the quad rotor, uh, the angular and linear velocity of the system. Uh, and we would like to take uh, continuous actions. We want to, uh, for each rotor, uh, be able to say, OK, what is the thrust on this rotor at this particular uh, point in time? All right, so the exploration strategy they come up with um, is kind of fairly unique. It's been introduced um, in a previous paper, but I don't think is very commonly used, uh, where we have uh, different types of uh, trajectories. So we start with an initial uh, policy and an initial trajectory. And every so often, uh, we reach a junction. And uh, in the junction, we are able to uh, not necessarily continue taking actions following the current policy, but we're allowed to explore other policies and uh, potentially switch to a better one. Um, and then um, after each junction, we uh, continue to train uh, the policy network uh, based on the uh, current new policy. Uh, so the idea here is to have a mostly on policy system to be able to um, efficiently and effectively uh, train the policy network uh, to come up with a deterministic policy, but also um, give us a chance to learn the best one. Um, yeah, so again, we have uh, two different networks. We train our value network. Um, by taking uh, Monte Carlo samples and trying to approximate the value function. And uh, we update our policy network uh, using a similar policy optimization as uh, TRPO. But in this particular case, um, we don't have a stochastic policy. So KL divergence uh, doesn't work for us. We don't want to take uh, the difference between two distributions. Instead, we want to um, take the distance between our uh, potential new policy distribution and our uh, current deterministic policy, which we can model uh, just as a point. Uh, so for that, uh, we want to replace uh, KL divergence with uh, what the authors call the Mahalanobis metric, uh, but it's a similar idea. Um, so here is kind of the basic idea of the learning algorithm. Uh, we want to uh, perform some exploration uh, Take an action most of the time uh, will follow the current policy, um, but may uh, be a junction that may uh, move to a new policy. We compute Monte Carlo estimates um, from the trajectory uh, that we're on from the current policy. Uh, we do an approximate uh, value function update, and we do a policy gradient update. Um, great. So uh, we have. Um, the authors introduce uh, some empirical results on a couple of different tests, um, mostly for safety issues. Uh, all of the training was done in simulation. Um, but they tested on a couple of different tasks on a real quad rotor. And they do show this in uh, the, their YouTube video. So I want to show you um, how that was done. All right, so uh, this was their training on a task uh, that they call uh, waypoint tracking. So the idea is that the quad rotor starts at some uh, initial random state, um, and it wants to find uh, the little red point in the middle. So uh, we can see in the very first iterations, it just takes some random actions in some random uh, direction and is nowhere near the point. And uh, over several iterations of training, it passes the point and uh, gets some reward, realizes that it reaches it, and tries to find some uh, policy to get back to it. And then we can see that over um, approximately 2,000 iterations, it finds a pretty good policy to uh, get to the point and then stabilize uh, on that point. Um, so that was an example of the training process. Um, I also want to uh, give examples of um, how this training was applied on a real quad rotor and uh, the results of some tests 
from that. So, so one example of a test um, is what they call disturbance test, where uh, the quad, uh, quad rotor starts at uh, some stable state, and then an external force, um, an external agent uh, produces some force. So it might be uh, this person trying to drag it in some particular direction, and it has to get back to its uh, initial state. And then we also have a throwing test, where um, the uh, experimenter throws uh, the quad rotor in some particular direction, and we don't really care about the state where it ends up, but um, it just kind of has to, to stabilize itself and, um, and get to a final state where it's not moving. So one of the primary contributions is, uh, of course, a uh, new algorithm and a new uh, neural network policy that is able to train a quad rotor to do um, certain tasks um, and uh, train and uh, converge to a good policy quickly. And um, also the uh, main experimental result is that even under fairly harsh conditions, um, the quad rotor was able to uh, stabilize itself and, and weren't to get um, to, a, uh, to either the initial state um, in the disturbance test or uh, to get to just some stable state in the uh, throwing test. And the throwing tests were particularly um, uh, yielded in particularly impressive results uh, because the experimenters um, threw it in, in fairly harsh um, initializations and uh, the quad rotor was still able to recover. So that shows that um, this learning algorithm indeed um, performs very well and uh, gives a very reliable performance. Um, so some future research ideas. Um, something that I noticed was that um, the uh, in this particular paper they uh, implemented and compared um, the algorithm that they came up with against TRPO, but they didn't compare it against pro uh, proximal policy optimization. So that might be um, kind of an interesting similar thing to see how um, a slightly different algorithm, but one that is uh, supposed to be kind of less computationally intensive, would also perform. Um, a couple of other um, ideas is that um, maybe we would like to introduce a more accurate model of the system into simulation. So uh, currently, the way they uh, model the state uh, state space is to model each state uh, just based on the uh, orientation, the position, and uh, the velocity of the system. But um, maybe there are some other external forces that happen, uh, like drag forces, that might change based on the particular state that we would like to incorporate into training to maybe do uh, have an even better performance. So we'd like to do that, um, or perhaps even train a model that is able to um, adapt to models or deficiencies, um, or errors or deficiencies um, in our current model automatically uh, would be maybe uh, an even better option. And uh, those are references. Any questions?